everybody. It's Wednesday, February 7th, I think. And um, we are going to leave Joshua Tree today and head back to the Ehrenberg area and maybe um, make a quick stop in Blythe and run into the animal shelter, although I know that, you know, nothing's going to come of that, but I just have to do it. Um, last night we had an incredible experience here at camp. Do you remember last month or a month before when we saw the SpaceX rocket launch from, um, uh, there, it, what was it? We were in Ehrenberg. We were in Ehrenberg, but what's Vandenberg, Vandenberg, Vandenberg Air, Air Force Base and got some great video of it. Well, last night, as you guys know, the other SpaceX rocket launch happened day before yesterday. Oh, yesterday in Florida. Well, we saw it here in Arizona last night. Unfortunately, the guys saw it outside. I was in my van and they're yelling, Carolyn, come out, come out. You got to see this. You got to see this. And I ran out with my camera, of course, and I got out just in time to see it, but it disappeared before I could um, turn my camera on and get get any video of it. But Mike did get a photo of it, so I'll show that to you. And plus, in the photo up in the upper left-hand corner, you can see Jupiter. And anytime I can see a planet, I get excited. So this was a, a double whammy. Um... Another thing, um, a lot of people have been telling me lately how tired I look. Um, for whatever reason, I'm not sleeping these days. Well, I know why. Um, and I'll tell you about that at a, in another video because that's going to take some time. But um, we'll just say coughing. Coughing. I have coughing all night long. So um, anyway, it's going to be a good day. Travel day. So I wanted to, we're on our way out, we're leaving um, Joshua Tree and heading towards Ehrenberg and then somewhere else, but I wanted to just do a quick little inside shot of Steve's um, covered wagon. And first of all, I'll show you the outside. This is actual canvas. I mean, look at that, and it's so clean, I can't believe how clean it is. And look at those adorable windows and this door. And he made this. I mean, he had help with somebody else who does the covered wagons, but he did a lot of this himself. Look at how adorable this is. He's got a sink with a hand pump, um, a little gas stove. Oh, I love that stove. That is so cool. Um, is that a 12 volt refrigerator? Yes. Cool. No solar yet, so right now it's storage. Okay. Oh, it's storage. Yeah, he doesn't have solar. So, and then his bed with all. I mean, look at this, you guys. This is absolutely adorable. And just so you know, um, he has a YouTube channel called High Tech Hobo, and I will leave a link to that in the description. So, check him out. And you can watch how I built this and everything else. Oh, yeah, you've got videos on building it. Awesome. Okay, thanks, Steve. Thank you. So I touched on this a little bit ago, and since I'm driving, I thought I might uh, share this with you. Um, two and a half years ago, I um, had a uh, just an x-ray taken. Um, I, I don't remember why I was having the x-ray taken, but in the x-ray they caught the bottom of my lungs and I had a mass in one of my lungs and um, or it might have actually been a, a CT scan, I don't remember, but the bottom line is they found a mass in, in one of my lungs. So I had to go in for a, a CT scan of, of my lungs and I had one large mass in one lung and one smaller mass in the other lung. 
and um, obviously lung cancer was suspected and um, that started a six month uh, horrible uh, horrible six months um, I had a son you know I have an only child and um, even though he was about 22 at the time I was still a full-time parent and it just scared us scared the you know what out of us and it took a long time to get a final diagnosis but during those six months as you know, working with insurance companies is just ridiculous. But luckily, I'm in an HMO, so everything is done, you know, in-house. You go to the HMOs, doctors and specialists and all that, which I do like. Um, I had a biopsy done, and it's, it's a major... Thing. It's under general anesthesia and they go through your throat and blah, blah, blah. Well, the first biopsy they did um, was inconclusive. And the surgery itself was horrible. I um, was in the hospital all day, all evening. It was supposed to be a 45 minute procedure and I ended up being in there for about eight hours. And uh, my, my lungs do not cooperate with surgery at all. I have um, severe asthma and any time I've had surgeries, which I've had a ton, um, I had asthma attacks in recovery all the time. And this was a bad one. And um, I was pretty sick for about two weeks after, um, just because of the invasive nature of, of the procedure. And then I had a second procedure, also a biopsy through, but it was more invasive than the first one. And, um, sorry, I'm driving. Um, and that was even worse than the first one and it took a total of six months to get the diagnosis of not cancer probably sarcoidosis that's a rare lung disease um, I'll let you google that if you want um, but that it can turn into cancer. And, you know, so I went for six months not knowing, because if you have, if you have uh, cancer masses in both lungs, that auto automatically makes it stage four. Once it goes into both lungs, it's stage four. And so I went for six months thinking that quite possibly I had stage four lung cancer and more than likely it was gonna kill me. And it's just been the last um, week or two that was the two year anniversary of finding out that it wasn't cancer or wasn't cancer. I still wasn't convinced because they it took him a lot of hemming and hawing to come up with the um, diagnosis of uh, sarcoidosis and I still think it's a differential diagnosis and not a definite diagnosis well the last couple months you know I mentioned people have been saying talking about how tired I look I don't see it but apparently you guys do and um, I'm not sleeping I'm coughing and my inhalers aren't working. So 
I'm not going to rush home to see my, see my pulmonologist, but I will definitely... I was supposed to be getting CTs every three months, and I haven't done that. I've had, I think, two CTs, or maybe even just one, since the diagnosis. And um, so I'm getting a little worried not a lot worried because my inhalers aren't working. I cough all night long and my albuterol isn't working. So that leads me to believe that it's not my asthma that's causing it. So I just wanted to let you guys know that that's going on because it is a worry for me. And like I said, I'm not sleeping. You know, I wake up coughing at three o'clock in the morning, every morning. and. I'm thinking about starting to put the head side of my bed up on blocks just to give me a couple more inches of elevation um, to see if that helps. It's never helped in the past, you know, with my asthma or my, you know, acid issues, but I'll try it. And so just you know, keep your fingers crossed that it's nothing serious. Um, and I'll, I won't be back to Washington for probably, um, till probably July, unless it gets a lot worse. And I'm looking because I think I see the Goodyear blimp again, so I'm gonna turn you guys around so you can see it. Um, I'm pretty sure it is the Goodyear blimp, but I'm not sure if it'll be big enough or in the frame if I uh, can you see it it's at about one o'clock tipping it up so you can see it a little bit better I'll show you as I get closer Goodyear blimp. I can see the side is blue with the big yellow letters. I hope you guys can see it. I'm not sure. You know, I'm driving, so I'm not looking at it or the camera. I hope I'm aiming it. Oh, oh there it is. I can see it now. But it's really small. It's right above me. I'm right underneath it. you find that as exciting as I do, but I think it's cool. So, did a quick drive through of why I went to all the previous stores, animal control, and unfortunately nothing has changed, but I'll keep looking. So, just heading over the river. Oh, and that was another thing. People kept asking me to go, go back to my camp spot. Go back to my camp spot. Because maybe she's trying to get back to the camp spot. She would have to swim across the Colorado River to get there. And we all know that's not going to happen. So, I appreciate the um, suggestions. But kitties don't swim across rivers. So anyway, so now I'm on my Ehrenberg, on my, on my Ehrenberg, I'm on my way to Ehrenberg, I need to get gas and some water, and then we will meet up with Dan the Blue Van Man, aka Gourmet Solar Ovens, um, now that he has his truck fixed, um, he can travel a little bit more, and we may end up going to Dome Rock, um, just a change in scenery. I camped there last year and really liked Dome Rock. And that's um, next, it's on the west side of Port Site. Okay, see you in a bit. So I'm 
made a keto snack, and I will tell you that having processed meat is not the idea behind keto, but it's quick, it's easy, and I am starving, so I bought some, and that is cream cheese wrapped around a pickle. So any kind of meat you want with cream cheese and a pickle, and it's going to be yummy.